Hello and welcome to a look back at 2016. Now 2016 was a bleak year. Very bleak. Considering we only had one episode of Doctor Who in the form of The Return of Doctor Mysterio. <laughs> Remind me never to do that again. Yes, considering we only had one episode in the form of yeah, I'm not doing that again. We, the fans, managed to keep the show alive in the form of creating YouTube content and getting books and reading Doctor Who magazine and turning to our DVD shelves to put on Doctor Who. But there was one side of fandom what definitely kept us going with fresh new Doctor Who, and that is Big Finish. So we'll be looking at some of my favorite releases from 2016 because by gum, there was a hell of a lot because we were guaranteed at least two Doctor Who releases uh, throughout the month, whether it be a fourth Doctor Adventure, the monthly range, and of course the numerous box sets and Torchwood. Now this overview or recommendations won't be including any of the early adventures from Series 3 or Cold Fusion um, or uh, Quicksilver and Absolute Power because I haven't listened to them yet and Jago and Lightfoot isn't there because I'm not up to them in the marathon. Yeah, so it's basically going to be the ones I've listened to so far. So without further ado, let's look at my highlights from 2016 in terms of Big finish. So kicking off the recommendations, we have classic Doctor's New Monsters. Now this wouldn't be a surprise to anybody who got Big Finish back in 2016 um, because this was a highly anticipated release, you know, having the classic Doctors meet the new monsters. Now Big Finish, I have to say, have chosen well with their Doctors and the monsters because they just go beautifully together. You think, yes, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Um, and my personal favourite within the set is Fallen Angel. Um, it's just a fantastic story. Um, I love, absolutely love Michael Andrew, played by David Kelly, I think. Did a fantastic job. Um, really great story, and it's, it's nice that they've actually tried to do something very inventive with the Weeping Angels. So adding that sort of fresh take, because we, the Weeping Angels are a bit predictable to us now, because we've seen them so many times, they've sort of lost that wow factor. But this is sort of regrained, sort of, my wow factor to Weeping Angels and obviously Big Finish are doing them again in um, Doom Coalition Force, that'd be interesting. Jadoon in Chains, very good story, um, love the character of Kaibo, really beautiful moments within it and the sixth Doctor of Jadoon, what more can you ask for? Uh, Harvest of the Sycorax, to me, um, this is when the box starts to sort of fall apart but still I'd give both stories um, Harvest of Sycorax and Sontaran Ordeal of 7 out of 10, so it's a still very good rating. Um, but Harvest of Sycorax, my problem is the Sycorax. That's where the problem lies. I think that they're not really, they don't sound like the Sycorax, what we know, um, and the way they're written, it didn't really fit for me. Um, but I loved how the Seventh Doctor basically took the mick out of them, which was great. And Ordeal of the Sontaran. It was a good introduction to the Eighth Doctor in the Time War, but I'm sure we're going to see some better stuff than that. But it's a very good story to have Christopher Ryan back in the Sontaran front. Now we have the penultimate novel adaption, Original Sin. Now, the Seventh Doctor really hasn't had a good year in terms of big finish for me. I mean, I didn't really like the Ace and Mel trilogy. I found that quite underwhelming. Um, but this put him back on track um, because it's by John Dorney and obviously the original book was by Andy Lane. Andy Lane, fantastic writer, love all his stuff, what he's done, what I've experienced, fantastic. And to have John Dorney adapt it, it's a match made in heaven, really. And if you're a fan of, you know, cyberpunk story, ICT and urban thrillers, then you're going to love this, because it's basically that. It's got such a broad scope to it, um, and a great mystery to it. Um, it literally, as soon as you um, put it on, um, you're literally thrown into this war zone. It's fantastic. But there is a negative. If you know the original villain in the book, um, the Big Finish don't have the balls to reveal who it is, which is kind of a shame because there are so many references sort of in there. I suppose you can make your own assumption who it is, um, but I'll leave that if you don't know who the villain is. And if you want to get the CD, I'm sure you'll work it out once you've got all the clues. Another together. highly anticipated release of 2016, and that was the 10th Doctor Adventures. Yes, if you followed my channel up to the lead up of this release, then you know I was incredibly pumped. I did a video about growing up with the 10th Doctor. And yes, this set didn't disappoint. I know people have said the stories are quite simple compared to Big Finish's usual standards, and yes, that is true. 
But if you want to get into the big finish stuff and you're a new series fan, then this is perfect because they're nice, simple, easygoing stories what you can just you just fall in love with. Because those three stories, each one represents a different aspect of the Russell T. Davis era. And just to hear the 2008 theme um, on Big Finish, it just takes your mind back to 2008 and to have probably the most the pop the most popular new series Doctor and Companion duo kickstart the new series line in terms of proper doctors actually voicing their characters, then yeah, this is definitely a wise move to have the Tenth Doctor and Donna kickstart. Now that onto movie. a hidden gem, a set what's kind of forgotten about, which is rather sad, and that is the Second Doctor Companion Chronicle box set. Now obviously 2016 was the 50th anniversary for the Second Doctor and this to me is the perfect sort of tribute to the Second Doctor because each story represents a different aspect of his era. So the first uh, story being Ben, Polly and Jamie, second being Victoria, Jamie, then the third being Zoe and Jamie and then the fourth just being Jamie. And it's just absolutely fantastic. My favourite is being, it was probably the Mouthless Dead um, because it's just eerie it's just creepy and it's a really nice twist on a ghost story and 2016 was the 100th anniversary of the song and it's a nice little tribute to the first world war with uh, being sort of a celebration of the um, unknown soldier returning back to the uh, Great Britain uh, it's a great little tribute um, to that as well uh, Story of Extinction I think uh, is a really beautiful story it explores uh, Victoria and Jamie's relationship um, which is really nice because you get um, Victoria teaching Jamie how to read and write. It's really beautiful just to have those two characters sort of explore because they're from a different time and to have them sort of realise that and think, yeah, we're, we're not so different after all, really. Um, the Integral, um, really nice sort of twist on a base under siege story and The Edge is just a really nice story for Jamie. Fantastic, I love this set. If you love the second Doctor, then this is a perfect tribute to his era. The Fourth Doctor Adventures Series 5 opener, The Wave of Destruction. Now, I wasn't really looking forward to this story. Um, it didn't grab me, it didn't appeal to me. But when I listened to this, I was proven wrong. It was just brilliant. Justin Richards really did capture the Season 17 feel of it and just the essence of Season 17. Because Season 17 isn't one of the greatest series of Doctor Who but they just put their own spin on it and this is fantastic. They've captured the characters of the fourth Doctor and Romanus to uh, relationship because they're quite flirty within it. Um, it's got K9 and Romana too being a DJ. What more can you ask for? And it's got a season 15 villain what's been redeemed and Big Finish have redeemed them back in the Companion Chronicles but to have them in a fourth Doctor adventure is brilliant and it's just a really fun story. Next up we have Order of the Daleks. Now, you might be wondering how can Big Finish make the Daleks fresh and exciting? Well, they make one a stained glass Dalek. Now, the way that's incorporated in the story is brilliant and how the Daleks get around it. They're very much like their cow uh, power counterparts. Now, if you love the Daleks and Power of the Daleks, then you're gonna love this because they're sly, they're devious, and the plot reveal um, in part two uh, is just superb. You're just like, wow. Like, as each, as the story progresses, it just gets better and better and better. It's a story which just keeps giving, and it's just absolutely fantastic. Now, I will be reviewing this, so I'm not going to go full in depth, but I absolutely love it. Order of the Daleks, Mike Tucker, you've done another cracker. Next up, we have another fourth Doctor adventure, The Trouble with Drax. John Dorney, you've done it again. An absolute cracking story. Um, it's full of twists and turns, and I can't really spoil, go into this story much because I will just spoil it um, but the way Drax you know outsmarts the fourth doctor is brilliant um, and part one's cliffhanger is just fantastic the amount of twists and turns within it and the ending of the story and the ending of the story leads you just wanting more it's one of those where you just think can we have a sequel it's brilliant Absolutely now we have recreating an era the third doctor adventures volume two <sighs> yes now I'll be honest the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 1, I, looking back on it, I'm not really much of a fan of. Um, I can see a lot of flaws within both stories. Um, I just think the hype got to me. But this has made me think, yeah, big finish of doing it right now. These these two stories are definitely a step in the right direction. Transcendent of Ephros is very much like Colony in Space, mixed with Carnival of Monsters. 
that sort of vibe I get when listening to it. But the cliffhangers within it are just so strong. Some of the best cliffhangers I've experienced in terms of Big Finish. Um, but part three's cliffhanger just makes you think, Big Finish, are you, are you actually going to do that? Are you really going to do that? It's one of those ones where you think, Big Finish, have, have you been clever? Have you really done that without us knowing? It's one of those sort of cliffhangers that really just you make you want to listen to part four straight off. Um, it's absolutely great. Tim Trelaw, I feel like he's done a lot more research and he's sounding a bit more like Pertwee, so he's got a bit more Pertwee goodness in his voice, but he's not just that, he's not quite there yet, but he's getting better. But I think hopefully as the box set progresses and the series progresses, they will get, he will sound more like John. And Hidden Realm is a great mystery story and it just fleshes out Joe a bit more with adding a family within it. It's just fantastic. Love the Third Doctor Adventures, and this is definitely a step in the right direction for the Third Doctor on Big Finish. Another monthly range release, Acritane. Now, this is Simon Bernard and Paul Morris's first outing in the monthly range, and hopefully it won't be their last because this is just a fantastic story. It's one of those stories where you don't want it to end. You know, I could see this story being a six part. It's got enough sort of material to carry it through. If you love paradoxical stories, you're gonna love this because it's got all this great mystery behind it, you know, what's happened to Aquitaine, and it's got one of the best supporting characters of Big Fish of 2016, and that is Hargreaves, this sort of robot on the cover, what you think's quite creepy, but he's actually a really lovable character. And it's just one of those great stories, and one of my fan favorites, actually, I really do love Aquitaine. It's got this nice creepy mystery vibe, and a nice paradoxical sort of story within it. It's fantastic, Aquitaine, I so, two recommend. more releases. At number two, we have The Labyrinth of Buddha Castle. Yes, one of my favourite Fourth Doctor adventures of all time. This is brilliant. Um, Eddie Robson, you've done a fantastic job. This story is so easy to picture in your head. You can see the Fourth Doctor and Romana wandering the streets. It's just a story what I can easily visualise. It's fantastic. I love the humour between um, Zoltan Fritz, the vampire. I, I just love the humour of the interaction between the fourth Doctor and them. It's just great. I love the vampire sort of element within it. It's sort of a sort of dark and humorous story. It's it's great. I just love the combo. It's quite gothic, but it can have a funny edge to it. And it just sums up the fourth Doctor great, you know, when he's in a you know, life and death situation, he cracks a joke and it's just fantastic. I love this. It gives me the sort of city of death and it's like City of Death and Sharda and uh, State of Decay all merged into one story. It's that good. I love this story. At number one, um, if you've known my channel um, throughout 2016, you'll know that I absolutely adore this story. It's probably one of my favourite audios of all time. And that is the Peterloo Massacre. This is one of the revolutionary stories for me because before I listened to this, I wasn't really a big fan of the Fifth Doctor. I thought, yeah, he's all right a bit bland but I like him. This story really did change um, the fifth, my perception of Fifth Doctor. I fell in love with him. Um, it's just a fantastic one. Um, personally I was dreading this story because it's a two hour historical with Davison but my god Paul Mars you've just done a magnificent job. I love it. You know you think that the story is gonna happen is gonna take you down one path but it doesn't. It's one of those great historical stories you know the Fifth Doctor standing up for what's right is brilliant you know him getting aggressive you know one of the most timid doctors out there getting aggressive and furious at um, a character called hurley is brilliant and demanding him to dismount from his horse is brilliant so to get the fury of the fifth doctor is fantastic i words can't describe how much i love this story i mean i've reviewed it i'll put a link in the description to my review of this um it's fantastic and the sound design for this is just blood chilling you know when you hear people just being cut down um, and sliced a bit it's just oh it just creates so many sort of great images in your head and it's such an easy story to picture and what I like about this story is that after all this sort of crazy elements will happen and quite serious elements it what boils down to it it comes down to a family drama and it's just a beautiful story and Honestly, if you haven't checked out the Peterloo Massacre, please do. It's one of the best audios, if not the best. I just truly adore it. So that concludes my recommendations from Big Finish of 2016. 
If you have your own highlights from Big Finish, comment them down below. I'll be interested to hear what were your standout moments in terms of audio from Big Finish from 2016. And uh, it'll be interesting, do you agree? Does the Peterloo Massacre deserve the top spot? Hmm. So yeah, that concludes this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it and I'll see you on my next video, whatever that will be. Hopefully I'll try and get a figure review out um, before it becomes another Big Finish review. If not, it will be a figure or Big Finish review. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.